Hey guys, welcome to the One Coin Only Arcade, and as always, we're going to be looking for all those classic games, past and present, and we're going to play them. We're going to insert a coin into them, and we're going to see how we can go off one credit. And today, we're going to be playing Blue's Journey. Now, this came out in the very early 90s by Alpha for the Neo Geo systems that you might have seen floating around everywhere, be it in the arcades, video stores, places like that. Uh, so we're going to see how we go today. We're going to insert a coin now. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. This is a great game, one that I used to see a lot in my childhood. And uh, as you can see, you can play this really cool cat here called Blue. Um, his goal is uh, to save the land from this evil corporation that's trying to exploit uh, the earth of all its resources and in turn they're going to pollute the hell out of it. So uh, yeah, you're Blue here and you need to go around and you need to save the day. And uh, one thing I have to point out straight away with this game is Blue controls amazingly. It's just incredibly responsive. There's only a few buttons you need to remember in this game. You've got a jump button. Uh, it's, it's absolute pleasure to use Blue here. Seriously, I can't stress it enough. The game handles amazing. Uh, you've also got an attack button. And then you've got this unique button which will allow uh, Blue here to shapeshift. Um, you're going to need to do that from time to time in order to navigate difficult puzzles. Uh, where you'd be too big to uh, go through otherwise. Uh, but you do need to use that little uh, shape shifter or whatever it's called sparingly because um, you leave yourself vulnerable. You can't attack when you're a small blue. So, uh, I mean, for a platforming game, there's little uh, subtle uh, strategy elements, I guess you could say, in this game. So, as you can see, what's really unique about this game as well is blue attacks things with a leaf. Who would have thought... Uh, these gigantic leaves could actually lay the smack down on anything, but for some reason in this game it works, so who am I to argue? I didn't design the thing. Uh, you also get to collect a lot of these flowers as you go along, they work in the way of currency. Um, so as you go along you'll find shops, things like that, and you can buy power-ups basically to help you in your journey. They're not necessarily uh, <clears throat> a necessity to pass the game, but they do help make your life easier. So, how many flowers we've got? 39? And, uh, yeah, we won't buy anything right now. I don't think it really matters today. But I guess you'll just have to trial and error with what you do buy in order to figure out, I guess, what suits your playstyle and what's going to help your journey the most. Or Blue's Journey, as the game is called. And, oh, cool, we got this power up where we're giant and invincible. I don't remember this, but we'll go with it. One thing I also need to point out with this game, guys, is it's incredibly colourful and vibrant. Uh, you know, games like this sometimes run the risk of not being taken seriously because they have that cute, innocent look about them. Uh, but you can't judge a book by its uh, cover. As I said, this game is incredibly responsive and fun. And uh, one of the best arcade platformer games I have played, actually. Obviously, there's a ton of them on console, uh, but they're running in short supply as far as uh, the arcade sense goes. And what's really good about Blue's Journey is uh, I think the, the difficulty is quite balanced as well. I don't think it's unreasonable, uh, which is saying a lot being an arcade game as well, and also being released in the Neo Geo platform. Those games are, are usually known for being notoriously difficult. And while this is tough, uh, it's not unfair. So again, I don't have enough nice things to say about Blue's Journey. I've mentioned how vibrant it is, how well it handles, and uh, the music is incredibly nice too. Just a happy-go-lucky uh, jingle in the background. The music kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Fantasy, what is it, Fantasy Zone, I think it is, from Sega. Um, just kind of has that whole feel about it, and so does the game too, just with its colours and uh, cute enemies and things like that. So, yeah, the whole presentation is fantastic. And it looks like we've got our first boss battle here. Uh, most of these bosses just have a, a basic attack pattern. Oh, uh, what we got, oh crap, we're dead already? What? So every time you uh, face a boss, um, if you die, you do have to start the boss battle all over again, which is probably the only thing that actually sucks about taking on a boss in this game. You can't just respawn and, and carry on, you know? But what we're going to do is we're going to stun uh, these little henchmen here, and then we're going to throw them back at the, the main guy, as you can see. So, oh crap, we've already got a hit. No, that's alright, we're on to the next level. So, uh, I have finished this many years ago back in the past, but uh, my reflexes aren't the same as what they used to be, so towards the end of the game, I do actually get stuck against some of these bosses. So I think we can pull one of these uh, rings now, and we'll get a, a bonus prize of some description. 
So we got five free flowers. Well, that's pretty cool. What's also cool about this is you can pick your path. And I think we'll stay away from the volcanoes. They kind of look a little bit scary, don't they? <laughs> Carrying on. This is another nice colourful level here. And as I was mentioning before, you really can't judge a, a book by its cover when it comes to these cutesy games. Um, I think uh, uh, Taito actually was one of the first companies to crush the mould on that stereotype when you had games like... Uh, Bubble Bobble and New Zealand Story and all those kind of things. You know, they look sweet and innocent, but they were hiding some fierce gameplay. And uh, I think Blue's Journey is another one of those uh, games that deserves to be sort of in that mold, if, I, if I'm so bold to say so. This is a solider platformer, as I've already mentioned, that you'll ever play. And so we've got this NPC here. Aren't you Blue the one who's going to beat Emperor Daruma? Well, I guess so. Okay, so we're going to find an old... So, I, as, you, as you can see, we uh, encounter NPCs along the journey. And uh, they'll either help us to if we hit certain requirements, I guess. So, in that respect, this game also reminds me a little bit of uh, Wonder Boy and Monster Land. It kind of has a, a, a subtle RPG element to it. Very, very subtle. Um, but it's cool. I mean, it's called Blue's Journey. And this game genuinely feels like a journey. Let me keep going here. Love the music in this level. And uh, I really think once this video is done, I'm going to keep playing this game, to be honest. I just, uh, you know, I, my playthroughs in this game are, are, are few and far between, but I, uh, it's always pleasantly, I mean, I guess distance makes a heart go fonder, really, guys, because uh, when I finally pick up and play this game again, I just can't, I always can never believe how long it's been since I last played it, because I always have a great time with this. Oh crap, am I dead already? Get out of there! Oh, it's game over. Well guys, this is Blue's Journey. Made a few mistakes there, but I did the best I could. We played it off one credit. Uh, I can't recommend this game enough. If, if you're into platforming games and arcade games in general, you have to give this a try. And as always guys, if you like what we do, please share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, support us on Patreon, and we'll see you next time.